वेलकम फ्रेंड्स एज प्रोमिस्ड वी विल स्टार्ट विथ अवर डायरेक्ट स्टीफनेस मेथड आई टोल्ड यू द प्री रिक्विजिट फॉर डायरेक्ट स्टीफनेस मेथड आर रोटेशनल स्टीफनेसेस एंड ट्रांसलेशनल स्टीफनेसेस विच वी हैव लर्न इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द स्टीफनेस मेथड वेन वी हैव लर्न the beam element before we learn the beam element we have seen what is rotational stiffness and what is translational stiffness we have seen four diagrams for rotational stiffness and we have seen four diagrams for translational stiffness they are the basics of this direct stiffness method let us consider a simple numerical for direct stiffness method let us consider a portal frame like this which is fixed at these ends and which is hinged at this end and let us say this is a b c d a portal frame this is i this is i and this is 2i a b c d this beam is loaded with 6 kN per meter and this is loaded with 100 kN load which is acting like this i i 2i a b and there is hinge at c a b c d let us say this is 5 meters and this is 4 meters length bc is 4 meters length ab and cd are 5 meters the moment of inertia for length ab is i moment of inertia for cd column is i and moment of inertia for beam bc is 2i it is loaded with 100 kN load at b and 6 kN per meter load at c so this is the numerical to be analyzed and the keyword is neglecting axial deformation neglecting axial deformation is the keyword so let us neglect the axial deformation for the analysis of this particular frame portal frame so step 1 the first step in the analysis of this portal frame is nothing but degree of kinematic indeterminacy now my friends pay attention this is not degree of freedom we are not going to analyze it using frame element this is not element stiffness matrix this is direct stiffness method so we need to take into consideration the effects we have learned in for calculation of degree of kinematic indeterminacy in our second lecture in the beginning of this semester so what is degree of kinematic indeterminacy i am drawing it again i am drawing it again and first i will find out what is degree of freedom and what is possible degree of freedom at this joint at this joint b i can say there are three degrees of freedom 1 2 and 3 at this joint c i can say there are 1 uh, then 2 and 3 3 degrees of freedom since these two are free joints so at this this is hinge so there is only one degree of freedom since it is hinged only rotation is possible and since this is free there are three degrees of freedom so degree of freedom we have seen for this is 3 plus 1 that is 4 this is fixed degree of freedom 0 this is fixed degree of freedom 0 this is free degree of freedom 3 and this is hinged so degree of freedom is 1 so degree of freedom is 4 now let us understand what is degree of kinematic indeterminacy using our basic principle what we have learned in the beginning of this semester degree of kinematic indeterminacy is nothing but possible degree of freedom so what is possible is this column is is it possible for this column to move in y direction no because it is fixed at this it is not possible to move in y direction so it is zero is it possible for this beam in, to move in x direction no because c is not going to move in x direction therefore b will not not move in x direction so this is not possible is it possible for b to rotate yes this is b this is a this is c and this is d is it possible for b to rotate yes so this is possible is it possible for c to rotate yes this is possible so independent and possible degrees of freedom are two and that is nothing but theta b and theta c this is the degree of kinematic indeterminacy concept we have seen in the beginning of this semester and i must remember it now again remember we are using direct stiffness method this means we are neglecting axial deformations many a times in your examination i have find i have found 60% of the time it is said neglecting axial deformations so axial deformations are neglected 
only rotations are to be considered. So we have considered the rotation at B and rotation at C as degree of kinematic indeterminacy too. So degree of kinematic indeterminacy for the structure by direct stiffness method is 2 that is rotation at B and rotation at C. Now my friends, let us find out the second step. Step 2 is fixed end moment. This is simple method. This is very simple method. Fixed end moments. Now, before I write fixed end moment, I will number these degree of kinematic indeterminacies. I will number these degree of kinematic indeterminacies. I will number these as 1. I will number these as 2. That's all. Very simple. I will number theta b, theta b as 1 and theta c as 2. Numbering theta b as 1 and theta c as 2. I have numbered this. Now I will find out fixed end moment. Now let me know due to this load acting at B, there will be no fixed end moment either in AB or in BC because this is the load which is acting at the joint and we all of us know loads which are acting at the joint do not constitute in fixed end moment. Only the loads which are acting on the member constitute to fixed end moment. So there is no question of this 100 kN to be taken into consideration for fixed end moment. So fixed end moment due to 100 kN is 0. This load should not be considered anywhere in the fixed end moment because it is acting at the joint. Only those loads who are acting on the members. If there would have been any member on AB or there would have been any member on CD, we would have considered that as fixed end moment. We have considered that load for calculation of fixed end moment. So FEM fixed end moment mom moment fixed end AB fixed end moment BA is equal to 0 because there is no load acting on the member AB. This load is acting at joint B. It will not constitute anything into fixed end moment. Now fixed end moment CD and fixed end moment DC is also equal to 0 because there is no load on CD, CD member. If there would have been any load acting on CD, we would have taken into consideration. Now for BC, is there a load acting on member BC? Yes, this is 6 kN per meter. If I fix B and C, what will happen? This is for 4 meters. This is B, this is C. I will get the fixed end moments as WL square by 12, 6 into 16 divided by 12, that is 8 kN meter and this is 8 kilonewton meter and 6 into 4 24 so this is 12 kilonewton because it is symmetrically loaded 12 kilonewton wl square 6 into 16 divided by 12 that is 8 kilonewton meter 8 kilonewton meter so mf bc is equal to minus 8 kilonewton meter because it is anti clockwise mf cb is equal to plus 8 kilonewton meter because it is clockwise these two are the fixed end moments acting in members bc and cb okay in that case we have calculated fixed end moment bc now what is fem fem for the structure fixed end moment matrix now what is the fixed end moment i am showing the fixed end moment on the structure i am showing the fixed end moment on the structure this is 8 kN meter and this is 8 kN meter, 8 kN meter. This is 8 kN meter and this is 8 kN meter. So fixed end moment at coordinate 1 is 8 and fixed end moment at coordinate 2 is minus 8. I hope you have understood fixed end moment matrix is equal to 8 minus 8. 8 means since we have considered coordinate 1 as anti-clockwise and this 8 is anti-clockwise that is why this 8 is minus plus. And we have considered coordinate 2 as anti-clockwise also, but this 8 kN is clockwise and that is why fixed end moment is 2. So FEM matrix is 8 minus 8. Since degree of kinematic indeterminacy is 2, everything will be 2 by 1 or 2 by 2. Now formation of step 3. Step 3 is formation of stiffness matrix. This is interesting as far as direct stiffness method is concerned. Formation of stiffness matrix. So very interesting and very simple as far as direct stiffness method is concerned. So what we do for generation of first column of stiffness matrix, we give 
rotation unit rotation at coordinate 1 so let us give unit rotation at coordinate 1 now i am showing you unit rotation at coordinate 1 where is coordinate 1 coordinate 1 is anti clockwise rotation at b so i am providing anti clockwise rotation at b i am providing anti clockwise rotation at b since b is connected this is theta b equal to 1 since b is connected to ab and bc both these members will be affected this is anti clockwise rotation theta b equal to 1 this is anti clockwise rotation theta b equal to 1 so theta b equal to 1 and theta b equal to 1 we know every rotation will have four sets of forces two moments and two reactions so for member ab there will be one set of moment which is anti clockwise that will be 4 ei upon l so since ei is 2 ei so 4 into 2 ei upon l is 5 and at a there will be 2 into 2 ei upon 5 this is the moments generated at b now there will be two sets of moments generated at in the member bc also same for member bc if i remember the rotational stiffness diagram 4 ei by l since ei is ei it is 4 ei by 4 and at b it is 2 ei by 4 friends i have not written any force any reaction at this point because there is no coordinate that is in the form of reaction there are two coordinates and both are rotational coordinates so i have written only the rotational forces i should have written 6 ei by l square and 6 ei by l square in ab 6 ei by l square and 6 ei by l square in bc maine likhna chahiye tha lekin likha nahi kyunki maine dekha hai dono jo coordinates hai ye dono rotation hai so maine sirf rotational force likhe b pe maine theta b equal to 1 diya I have given theta b equal to 1 because my definition of stiffness is rotation caused by uh, forces caused by unit rotation or unit deflection. So therefore, rotation equal to 1, rotation equal to 1. So, in the portion AB, 4 into 2 EI by 5, 2 into 2 EI by 5. In the portion BC, 4 into 1 EI by 4 and 4, 2 into 1 EI by 4. Now, let me know, am I in a position to write K11? Yes. I am in a position to write K11. K11 is force at coordinate 1 due to unit deflection at coordinate 1. This is the diagram of unit deflection at coordinate 1. So force at coordinate 1 is this 8 EI by 5. It is anti-clockwise. Coordinate 1 is also anti-clockwise. So it is positive 8 EI by 5 plus this is also at coordinate 1. This is also at B. This is also at B. This is also at B. So this force is also at B that is 4 EI by 4. So I will calculate it as 8 by 5 and 4 by 4 that 8 by 5 is 1.3 EI plus EI that is equal to 2.3 EI K11 is 2.3 EI. Now this is my first. Now what is K21? Force at coordinate 2 due to unit deflection at coordinate 1. This is a diagram of unit deflection at coordinate 1. So force at coordinate 2, I know it is 2 EI by 4. So that is 2 EI by 4 and that is equal to 0.5 EI. So this is how I have generated my first column of stiffness matrix directly by direct stiffness method, method by taking into consideration rotational stiffnesses and translational stiffnesses. Friends, again, this is incomplete diagram. I have not shown any translational forces over here. I have not shown any reaction in the portion BC. I have not shown any reaction in the portion AB. Why? Because I have judged the coordinates with respect to me are only rotations. So instead of writing it and making it complicated, I have written only rotations. And this is not corresponding to any coordinate. That is why I have not considered this. This is considered, this is considered and this is considered because these rotations, these forces, these moments are corresponding to coordinate either coordinate 1 or coordinate 2. These two moments are corresponding to coordinate 1. These two moments are generated at B. Therefore, they are uh, corresponding to coordinate 1 and this moment is generated at C. Therefore, this is corresponding to coordinate 2. This theta b equal to 1. This means applying unit deflection at coordinate 1. So, this is I have generated my first column of stiffness matrix. Let us generate the second column of stiffness matrix. I know to generate the second column of stiffness matrix, what I need to do? I need to do give anti-clockwise rotation to coordinate 2. My coordinate 2 is C. This is anti-clockwise. So, I am providing anti-clockwise rotation at C. 
I am providing anti-clockwise rotation at C. Since C is connected by two members, CB and CD, both these members will get affected. So this is theta C and this is also theta C. I am applying theta C equal to 1. I am applying unit deflection at coordinate 2. Again, I will consider only the rotational forces. The first force at C in this direction for BC, it is 4 EI by L that is 4 and half of it will be at B that is 2 EI by 4 that is equal to OK 4 that 2 EI by 4 and the second force in the portion CD will be again 4 into 2 EI by 5 4 into 2 EI by L because EI is 2 EI and at D it is 2 into 2 EI by 5. Now my friends I will consider this is I have applied the unit deflection at coordinate 2. Now I can consider what is K12 force at coordinate 1 due to unit deflection at coordinate 2. This is the diagram of unit deflection at coordinate 2. My coordinate 1 is rotational coordinate at B. So what is the rotation at B? It is 2 EI by 4 that is equal to 0.5 EI and what is K22 force at coordinate 2 due to unit deflection at coordinate 2. This is my coordinate 2 as well as this is also my coordinate 2. This is acting at C, moment acting at C. This is also moment acting at C. This moment is in the portion CB. This moment is in the portion CD. And I need not consider this D because there is no coordinate at point D. Okay, this is point D. At, I did not consider anything at D. So what is K22? The first is 4 EI by 4 that is EI plus 8 EI by 5 that is 1.3 EI that is equal to 2.3 EI. So my K11, K21, K11, K21, K12, K22 all is ready. So my stiffness matrix for the structure directly if I take EI common I can say 2.3 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 2.3. My friends, remember this stiffness matrix also should follow all the properties of stiffness matrix. That is diagonal elements should be positive and other elements may be positive or negative, but they are symmetrical. Since this is 2 by 2, the degree of kinematic indeterminacy of the structure is 2. The stiffness matrix is 2 by 2. Now the next step that is step 4 is equilibrium equation direct structure equilibrium equation this is very simple method this is very simple method equilibrium equation the structure equilibrium equation p is equal to fem plus k delta just like our previous experience my fem structure i know my fem structure is 8 minus 8 my k matrix plus ei into bracket 2.3.5.5.2.3 2 and there will be two deflections theta b and theta c theta b is delta 1 theta c is delta 2 and what are the values of p1 and p2 p1 and p2 are the values of the forces acting at coordinate 1 and 2 now my coordinate 1 is rotation at b there is no rotational force acting at b this 100 cannot be p1 this 100 is the force acting at B, but 100 is a force and my coordinate is a rotational coordinate. So P1 is equal to 0. P1 is equal to 0 and P2 is also equal to 0 because there is no moment acting at C. We have seen this concept in our beam analysis. There is no moment acting at C. There is no moment acting at B. My coordinate 1 is moment at B. My coordinate 2 is moment at C. There is no moment acting at B. No moment acting at C. This 100 kN is not a moment. So we are, not, we are not going to consider this in P. So P is equal to FEM plus K delta. Now you must have judged this is the equation of two equations with two unknown and we can find delta 1 and delta 2. Now once we have found out delta 1 and delta 2, how to put it in our equations and get the value of final element forces. This is the matter of our discussion in our next lecture. I hope you have understood this direct stiffness method. Any doubts, any welcome, any doubts are welcome and in this case we will see that this is very simple method. This is called as direct stiffness method. We don't need to write element stiffness matrix and fixed end moment. We don't need to write transformation matrix. We can directly apply our principles of rotational stiffnesses and translational stiffnesses to the direct stiffness method. I hope you understood this well. Your doubts and queries most welcome. Thank you.